Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today is like a great day I guess because I know a lot of you have been asking me about the She Sent It and asking me to do a review. So that day is finally here, She Sent It product line review coming to you right now. She Sent It, I love it. <laughs> it's in my top two favorite lines. It has at least three of my HGs. It has my HG deep conditioner, my HG protein treatment and my HG leave-in. And that's pretty much what I use, right? Besides like cleansers and stuff. And I really love the blueberry co-wash as well. So if I have to pick one line to live off of, it would have to be She Sent It. So the kind of is coming up there. Because I have an HG DC and I have a nice leave-in. Maybe it actually even comes to Tanifas as well. I have to try it again. But right now, it's She Scented. So the trend with the She Scented products is that they tend to be very light and very hydrating. So I definitely recommend them if you're like super low porosity like me. If you have fine hair and you don't want anything to weigh your hair down. If you have high porosity, you can definitely still use the cleansers and deep conditioners. In fact, all of the products. But I just probably put like a butter or something heavier on it to seal it in. So, without further ado, let's get to the products, right? <laughs> I guess going in order of these, these are like my new kind of HD from her. And it's still like my top two deep conditioners, even though I don't like it as much as the banana brulee. This is the She Scented Rich Moisture Mask. You can take a look at the ingredients. Top ingredient, super hydrating. I think that's a trend with at least her deep conditioners. Then you get to like the BTMS, settled alcohol, and so on. And hydrolyzed silk, I know it's really softening and stuff for your hair. And it has orange essential oil. This is very, very hydrating. Lots of slip, very moisturizing. And it's in my top two deep conditioners. It's an HG deep conditioner for me. So I definitely recommend this for anybody trying out She Sent It. This is a, let me if you can see the texture. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I don't have my take off, so I might as well not take out any, right? But this is the texture. It's very hydrating. It smells amazing. It has like a light fruity scent. Some people describe it like candy, so I guess my products smell kind of like candy, like like the shell of the M&M, <laughs> I guess. But it's not overpowering. So next up is another deep conditioner, the Curl Moist Conditioner. So I also really like this one. It's probably a little bit less amazing than the Rich Moisture, but it's still nicer than like most of the other products out there. Another than the Sultanical DCs, which I also love, I would buy this or use this before DCs from any other line. I buy this and the Rich Moisture from She Sent It, and I buy the Afrotastic and the Manoy, I think, from the Sultanicals. I'm still thinking of my second place deep conditioners, I guess. You already know my favorite two, but I like variety, so I don't want to just be using the same two deep conditioners all year. So I still buy this, even though I like it a little bit less, just for variety and because it's still also really good. This one has water-infused aloe. Like I said, water-infused hydration is a key thing with her deep conditioners. And then it has like marshmallow root, organic mango extract, slippery elm, goji berry extract, oat extract, avocado oil, then it gets to the BTMS. So her stuff is really good and really high quality. So if you're looking for like quality products that really work, definitely check out She Sent It. And that's like coconut oil for those who don't like that. It smells similar to the Rich Moisture. Almost the same, I guess. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this one is actually a little bit thicker than the Rich Moisture, which I never noticed before. So I guess doing reviews are happy for you as well as me. Like you can kind of see that kind of look a little more white. So you guys who like heavier things might like this. So it's not that heavy that it actually triggers me. It's still pretty light and goes on really easily. But I noticed it's a bit thicker than the Rich Moisture. So next up is this Okra Hair Repair Reconstructive Conditioner. I've tried Kill Junkie. I've tried Giovanni, but none of them really was as nice as this one, so I just kind of went back to it and has been faithful ever since. In terms of ingredients, aloe vera juice, okra extract, which I, I, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I love me some okra in my hair. Yes, I put okra in my hair and yes, it's great. So the hydrolyzed protein is actually pretty low down. After the glycerin, you get hydrolyzed keratin and hydrolyzed soy protein and beta amino acids and rice protein. 
So definitely has protein in here, but the protein is pretty low down. So it is a mild protein treatment. If your hair just doesn't like a lot of protein, but you're finding a little bit of protein, you might want to give this a try. So this one is actually sealed. It is pretty runny. It probably smells similar to the other things that I've been through here, which is kind of like a light candy scent. So I also used the fortifying mask before. It's also a protein treatment. And I liked it, but I think I prefer the okra. After that, we can talk about conditioners. Her conditioners, I guess you know the trend, pretty light, pretty runny. I tend to just use them as leave-ins. I don't use pricey rinse or conditioners in general. For my rinse or conditioner, that's the one place that I just head to the drugstore. So right now I'm using Trust Me Perfectly Undone. I don't buy fancy rinse out just because I like to just go have my rinse out and I don't like to think about all my money going down the drain literally, you know, in five minutes. So I have this one, the Papaya Ultra Nourish Conditioner. So this is from her new Papaya line. So I did use this as a leave-in, not as a rinse out, but I have used the avocado and the apple nectar as rinse out. I found that the papaya is even lighter than usual. This is runny, but I really liked it. It was really moisturizing and defining as a leave-in. So I would recommend if you try it as a leave-in. I really love her leave-ins and her leave-ins are my issue. So why am I buying her rinse out to use as a leave-in? Does it mean I'm a PJ? I don't know. You tell me, I guess, maybe, <laughs> gently. You know what it smells like? It smells like skin lotion. I know that's random, but it smells like a nice skin lotion. You know, back in the day, if you're training those old school jiggins, a little bit like that. That's how it smells in my first scent. Like, I think there's a slight fruity scent there, but if I had to give it a scent, it would be a nice skin lotion. In terms of the ingredients, let me see if you can be able to see it. There is a little bit of papaya seed extract at the end. When I saw this line, I was really excited because papaya is like a Caribbean fruit. And I was like, oh, okay, I have to try it out. I have to reminisce, I guess. It doesn't really smell like papaya to me, though. But this was really good. This was really fun to use. So next up, we have the cleansers. And I already kind of talked about the co-wash. So I like her blueberry co-wash conditioner. So this one varies by the batch, but... It's always cleansing, it's always moisturizing, and always has great slip. Sometimes she says the yucca that they get foam more, so it's more cleansing. And sometimes the yucca foams less, so it's like more moisturizing. But it's always kind of in there, in that range. It smells like candy, like everything else. It's pretty runny, like everything else. <laughs> but it's really effective, and it's really a great co-wash. So I think after the Camille Rose Caramel co-wash, this is my number two co-wash. And she has better sales, so... I definitely always stock up on a couple of these Black Friday when I'm doing a big sale from her. So the ingredients, water, aloe vera leaf, marshmallow root, has rice bran oil, avocado oil, BTMS, and then it has like yucca root extract. So I was a little bit skeptical when I first bought this because I like my co-washes to either have clay or cocoa betaine. But the first time I bought this and I tried it, I was really cleansing. Like I couldn't argue that it wasn't cleansing. It was really cleansing. And I know that yucca is also a surfactant, so it's also a cleanser. So that's why I decided to stick with it. I really couldn't say that yucca wasn't doing its thing in the cleansing department. So that's a story with that. Next, I have this jojoba hemp conditioning shampoo. I'm still looking for a shampoo, as you can kind of tell. Especially since the Blue Rose made discontinue hers. I'm kind of looking for like a conditioning moisturizing shampoo. I bought this hoping it would be that one. I will say that it kind of needed to shake it up. It had kind of settled by the time I was going to use it. So I didn't shake it up and I kind of used it. So I probably used some of the something on the top. Now I'm like, should I even review it since I didn't shake it? But she didn't say shake it on the label, so I'm going to review it anyway. So it was a decent shampoo. It was a little bit conditioning, but it didn't... wasn't super duper moisturizing like the Blue Rose Creamy Rose Shampoo. If you're looking for a shampoo that is conditioning and moisturizing, not stripping and cleansing, definitely try this. But there are more moisturizing shampoos out there also, I believe. So I don't think I will purchase this one. This is the ingredient of the shampoo. It has hemp seed oil. also has salt, which is good for definition. Interesting that it's included in here. Willow bark, chamomile, jojoba oil, red clover. So it is an interesting formulation. The ingredients are really interesting. And I don't see these ingredients or some of them everywhere. So it is interesting in terms of ingredients, but in terms of like a shampoo, it's nice, but it's not like the best shampoo that I ever had. I do like to have several types of shampoos in my stash. I like to have a clarifying, and I like to have a moisturizing. 
but this doesn't really quite fit the bill for either one. I mean, I'm sure I can use the clarifier my hair, it is clarifying, but it is still kind of conditioning. This is kind of in between moisturizing and clarifying, I guess, which I don't think I need an extra lane for in between. I just want moisturizing and clarifying, I think. So, probably won't be purchased this one. So, moving right along, leave in conditioners. I did get the Papaya Daily Moisture Leave in Conditioner. So, this one I think I actually got it for free. Because she's really nice if you buy a lot in one go. She tends to give me like throw in a free item. So usually I just buy once or twice a year. So I usually buy a lot. So I usually get a free item. So I think I got this one for free um, on Black Friday. But I used it. I like it. It's kind of very runny. Very hydrating. Lots of slip. Moisturizing. You know the drill. These are the ingredients. It has water, BTMS, so no extracts like before the BTMS. And usually I hate products that are like water, BTMS, because they tend to be heavy. But I was like, if she sent it, it's not going to be heavy. I, I just use it anyway and I actually do like it. It actually works just like all her other stuff, I guess. Which is amazing. <laughs> so I do notice the papaya seed extract is pretty low down. And also it's papaya seed extract, not the fruit. But with the fruit, you're expecting like a humectant and stuff like that. With the seed, it's probably like an oil. It smells like the other one. Slightly fruity, but kind of like a baby powderish, skin lotionish kind of scent coming at me as well. Overall, my view of the papaya line, I only have two things from the line. This I'm definitely probably gonna get again because it's glycerin free, which is like probably the only thing in her whole line that's glycerin free, at least in the conditioners. This one, I may not get it again just because I prefer the cocoa rose leave-in. That's actually my HD leave-in. I do love this cranberry cream. Cocktail. This one is actually very stuck for me. It was my issue before I tried the Coco Rose leave-in actually. So this is like was my favorite leave-in in the whole world. Then the Coco Cream leave-in collection became my favorite leave-in in the whole world. And then I just tried that by Kura Hair Milk that is now up there. I have to kind of figure out if I like it better than the Coco Cream or not. I guess it probably does have that candy scent. I don't remember. I haven't used this in a while. Because like I said, I just use, um, she said it more in spring and fall. And it's pretty light. It's lighter than the cocoa cream leave-in conditioner. These are the ingredients. Green tea extract, um, chamomile flower extract, cranberry fruit extract. Then you get into the acai fruit extract. I actually have some which is at the very end, which is the extract, which is interesting. No butters. It has a slight fruity scent, so if you're thinking, expecting cranberry, maybe you may have gotten some cranberry out of it. You know, partially supplied by your mind, but most of the scents are like a light, fruity, light, slightly fruit kind of candy scent. I think it was similar to the Coco Rose Creamy even in terms of definition. I just like the Coco Rose slightly because it's a little more creamy and it was kind of like a woo from the line to have something that's actually on the creamy side as opposed to on the hydrating, penetrating, light side. Okay, so next is my actual current HG sort of under attack from the Bakura <laughs> but yeah when I first used this I was like so happy because my only issue was the cranberry but this was like cranberry plus cranberry plus creamy richness these are the ingredients let's see if you can see water infused with elderflower extract calendar extract horsetail extract Yarrow extract. I have coconut cream, which kind of interests me because I love coconut cream. Has sea kelp, which is also great for your hair, and pantanal, which you know is good for your hair. And it ends with green coffee extract, which is also interesting. Coffee helps with shedding and everything like that. So it's a great formulation overall in terms of the scent. So I guess you can get a look at how it looks and how it runs. <laughs> Let me put it on before I waste even more. It smells nice. <laughs> I know that's a horrible description. It smells really light, like it's really hard to catch a scent from it at all. Like slightly fruity, slightly sweet, but just slightly. It's a really mild scent. So if you don't like strong scent, definitely recommend trying this line. I have this she sent it, Thaishan Vanilla Coconut Leave-In Spray. And I guess these are the ingredients. So in terms of the products I use, I like a clarifying shampoo, moisturizing shampoo, co-wash, Deep conditioner, leave in conditioner, and spritz. I would use my DIY spritz or water and then use this spritz over it just to save some pesos and control frizz and give my hair a little moisture boost. 
Once I spritz my hair, my curls tend to kind of relax a little bit, like get a little bit less frizzy. And then once I spritz it with this, this helps to retain that less frizzy look. If I just let it dry again with just the water, it might get pretty. But this helps it to dry with the increased curl definition from the water. My favorite new spritz is the Sultanicals Hair Sorrel. The Hair Sorrel kind of really penetrates and hydrates and stuff like that, and it's kind of a heavier spritz. This spritz is pretty light. I don't even know if you can see that. I guess you probably could. So it's pretty light, which I wasn't a fan of for the summer when you're, you're hot and you just want moisture fast. But it does well like if you want to go somewhere and you don't want to have wet hair and you want to give your hair a little extra sheen and shine, you can just kind of spritz this on and not have wet hair, but you did have a little bit of a moisture boost and a shine boost and stuff. When I repurchase it, I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm going to try this one first. And I also bought a, a spritz for me at Organic, so I'll try that too. Since this is the only glycerin free one, I might just repurchase it <laughs> until I find a better one. Yes, PJ problems. But for now, this is my winter spritz. I'm not completely, totally amazed by it, but it does do the job. It definitely controls frizz and adds moisture. So it does smell slightly like the candy, but it's a really light scent. So we're finally almost to the end. Special mention to this butter, so I haven't actually tried it yet. The Moisture Pro Triple Butter Heavy Cream. I think maybe she heard suggestions and wanted to come up with something richer and heavier for those who like that. So she bought this really heavy cream. It's really heavy like for her, there's nothing running at all. As opposed to like everything else that she sells. But this is also kind of heavy. Not heavy but not light, not runny. But if you're looking for something heavier, definitely, definitely try this. Definitely there are a lot of naturals who like heavier stuff. I mean, I like light stuff, so I'm in heaven. But this, I think, was kind of like listening to her clientele and bringing out something for those who like heavier products. In terms of the ingredients, it does start with water first, which is good for me at least. Then it has anica extract, chamomile extract, and then it gets into the butter. So it has takuma seed butter, then it has kuposu butter, and mango seed butter. Then you get to marshmallow root, and then argan oil, moringa seed extract, and raw honey. Raw well, honey is good for me whenever I hear honey I perk up because my hair loves humectants. Glycerin fine in terms of certain weather but my hair loves honey year round because it's a film forming humectant. So whenever I see honey in a product I'm like yes. Whenever I see fruit extracts in a product I'm like yes. Yes that's for Daisy. So definitely can't wait to try this out. I don't know when I'll get to it because I just take so long to get through butters. But this is definitely on my list to try out and when I try it out you try it out because I will let you know how it works. <laughs> So that's it, I'm finally finished reviewing the She Scented line. In summary, I love them. In summary, they're light and hydrating, lots of slip, very moisturizing. But if you like heavier products, they may not be for you. But if you have ultra porosity or fine hair, you probably love them. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely let me know what you think of She Scented, if you've tried it, if you're planning on trying it. She usually has about 30% off on Black Friday and at least one other time during the year. If you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, I'll let you know when her sale is. Or you can just go ahead and follow She Sent It directly as well. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy my content. Just support. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.